me ask you a couple questions just about you mm -hmm. and your experience. Sure. Um, how old were you again when you started? I was 12 when I started. That's that seems pretty young to me to get into this kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Again, I um, I know plenty of folks who are younger than me that got started and okay. they're they're amazing players. So okay. <laughs> it's never too young. What was your first performance like then? Mm -hmm. when you, do you remember when you first my, played in public? I remember my very first performance. Um, my first, I'll say it was my first paid gig that I went out and okay. I did, and it was playing for a wedding as people were coming in from the parking lot to go into the reception. Okay. So it was really easy, um, and it was it was funny because uh, at the time my my music teacher. Um, he actually gave me the gig, one of my music teachers at the time, and he came into class and and he was like, oh, Lucas, can you hang out for, for a second after class? I was like, oh, no, what did I do? <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, hey, do you want to take this gig? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay. So I got to play, and it was very low pressure because you just hang out, you play as people are coming in, and once everybody's inside, you're done. Okay. <laughs> so okay. everybody was really nice. Um, and I think I was too excited to be nervous, so I was okay. I was just ready to go okay. and uh, and play. And I was really happy to see such like a positive response too. People okay. were like, oh, bagpipes, that's so cool. Um, and the other thing that gave me confidence was my kilt from USA Kilts at the time, because <laughs> I knew I looked awesome. So no matter what, we we're not what, trying to do product placement <laughs> with this, honestly. So we were not trying no to do matter that. what, I was I was all set. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I know you've known Rocky for a long time. I have. So yep. Rocky. Yep. Yep. That's cool. Um, so, what was the weirdest or maybe the hardest gig you've ever done? Ooh. Like, if you wanted to paint a nightmare scenario for a new piper, say, don't let this happen to you. Yeah, what, yeah. What would, what would that be? So, one of the one of the weirdest ones. Well, I'll say I'll say one of the coolest ones I played for okay. was a pirate-themed wedding in somebody's backyard. Okay. And that was amazing. Okay. Um, the food was great, and everybody was fantastic, and all. Garbed out, so it was sweet. Um, but the one of the more difficult ones, and I've had this happen a couple times, is when the person who hires you doesn't really understand how loud bagpipes are, and you're in mm. a situation. One being a, I was in, I was playing at a church for a funeral, and I had uh, I had a lady come over to me and say, "Hey, can you turn those down a little bit?" And I had to explain uh, that's not really possible that's with bagpipes. Works, You're okay. playing at one volume. So I said, well, you know, is it okay if I go over here to the other side of the church as people are coming in? Um, and she said, yeah, that's fine. So it worked itself out. Okay. A okay. I played over there. It was it was all good. Um, the other weird one uh, was I was playing for a fundraiser, and I was supposed to play outside as people were coming in for about an hour, um, and it didn't work out so well because it was pouring rain outside. So I started playing inside, and it was a weird ratio of people because a bunch of them liked me playing inside, a bunch of them didn't like me playing inside. Understood. Is so because it was too loud. It again? was really loud. Okay. Yeah, and okay. and the whole there was there was a lot of um, like it was it was just a like a stone floor, so it was you know really was really fun, really, yeah. really loud. So uh, what I ended up doing was just kind of circulating through, and you know if you're if you're in that situation, it's a okay because you're going to circulate through. You're going to only annoy these people for a little while. These people are going <laughs> to like you, um, and it gives everybody okay. a chance to get a picture, you know, with a piper because okay. that's always a cool thing right, right. Um, for folks to do too so yeah it worked itself out well um, but one of the one of the alternatives um, for the Highland pipes or small pipes which we'll talk about probably in a future yeah, like to, episode yeah. as, a, as an option and that's uh, something that works really well inside because they're a lot quieter so they're going to be a bit more versatile for those situations where well I'm going to this event and I don't know what the environment's going to be like exactly okay. I'll bring the small pipes just in case so okay. that's something to consider as well and that's the nice thing about piping is once you do the the highland pipes um i'd recommend starting with the highland pipes okay. uh and then coming back down to the small pipes because from the small pipes to highland pipes is a lot more difficult than throwing the bar up here and then coming coming back down there hmm. um okay. and that's that's effort wise as far as as far as actually powering the instrument so i would assume, I would assume the highland pipes are more common in this country anyway mm -hmm. it's gonna be a lot easier to find a uh, a full, you know, Highland Pipes instructor or band than 
it's the way you can teach you small pipes. Or yeah, am I wrong? yeah. Right. Well, it's there's there's a whole lot of crossover, and small yeah. pipes are definitely really popular um, okay. these days. There's a lot of folks who who have been playing Highland pipes for so long, and they just want to do something a little bit different. Okay. Um, there's a lot of folks who just want to have more enjoyment out of their practicing, and maybe okay. they live in a row home and they can't play their their full set of bagpipes all the time. Right. But they right. can play their small pipes, and that's not going to bug anybody. Or um, somebody who's in like a session band and they're going to play small pipes with other instruments. So that's something. Okay. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely address that later on. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's 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 something that when you're looking for instruction and for bands, you're going to find you, most of the time the the Highland band first, the traditional pipe band that's out there. And later on, you may find oh, some of these guys play small pipes, or some of these folks go to sessions, um, which is just a bunch of people meeting at a at a pub or someone's house playing some tunes. Right. So that's Classic. another yeah. yeah that's another that's another uh, way that you can enjoy the instrument as well okay. yeah hmm? if there was one piece of advice one thing you know now that if you could go back in time and tell your your young self when you're just starting one piece of crucial golden Ooh. advice Ooh. when you're just starting out what would it be that's a really good question yeah, um, well, I'm really I this. yeah <laughs> you know I would say if if I was just starting out me Communing with 12-year-old Lucas, who's mm -hmm. just about to start learning how to play, how to play the chanter and play the pipes. Um, I think it would be more on the professional side of things, okay. and it would be once in a while. It's not a very inspiring way to end, but once in a <laughs> while, it's okay to play on your terms. So huh. it's it's something that you know it's very easy once you play the bagpipes. Um, uh, people will want you to play for this or for that, um, and it's part of being a good ambassador of the instrument. That's a more positive way to end it: is okay. be a good ambassador of the uh, ambassador of the instrument. Make sure that you are playing well. Make sure you're playing to the best of your ability, tuning to the best of your ability. Uh, that's really the, one of the most important things that that you're going to have to work on as a beginning piper, as a developing piper. And it's a lifelong journey. It's not mm -hmm. like just flipping mm -hmm. a switch. You're you're always working to improve yourself. So that's what I would mm -hmm. say: is make yourself a great Ambassador, ambassador of the instrument, no matter what you're doing. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right.